recording. I've started anyway. recording. So welcome this Easter Friday over there, Easter Saturday here in Australia. It's interesting how everything, you know, as you live your life, everything, every pieces of information that you pick up that maybe don't make sense in the moment all come in to sort of make sense when you get a broader, uh, you get a more expansive view of what's really going on. When I was talking to Frances, who we're going to talk to next in the Inner Sanctum, about the information in her books, the channeled information in her books, we were talking about thought form. And in the book, she called them spheres, thought spheres. And she was saying mm -hmm. that these spheres of thought, when you buy into a, a certain vibration of thought or a belief, say it's a religion, that's a certain vibration or a belief, it creates a sphere and the more people that believe it, the bigger the sphere becomes and the more impact it has. And this is what we were talking about at the beginning of this, um, you know, that thought form or that thought sphere that there is no life after death. That is so, it's so encompassing and it becomes your reality and it becomes your truth that when somebody uh, comes with a different idea and says, oh yeah, there's not only life after death, we're infinite multidimensional beings. It really challenges you because you're encompassed in this sphere of thought. And as we were talking about the different spheres of thoughts that are available to us to plug into, we can like literally plug into them and we feed them with our thoughts and they feed us. It reminded me of Malcolm's planets of fear, of, of hell. And those planets are actually the spheres of thought. They're not physical planets. They're, they're energetic planets of thought. So when you're in anger or you have murderous, revengeful thoughts, you're literally plugged into this sphere of thinking or this planet and it's feeding you and you're feeding it. It's a symbiotic relationship. So it's like you, when you have a when you plug into an angry or revengeful or hateful thought, all of a sudden all your thoughts start to be um, coloured with that same vibration, and you start hating everybody and criticising everybody because you're plugged into this sphere of thought. And I, it just made me think of those planets that the Hare Krishnas talk about. So maybe they describe them as planets, but maybe what they were really talking about was vibrational spheres. But when the religion, you know, came into being thousands of years ago, people couldn't understand that concept of vibrational sphere. And so a planet makes a lot more sense. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. Oh, they call yeah. it planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call well, it planets. Well, okay. Yeah. Mm. You could look at it any, any way. And, you know, for a while I was reading the work and I met him of Alberto Violdo. Do you know him? of the four winds. Anyway, it's indigenous cultures, that thing, because they talk about you can go and you have, uh, or when people talk about entities, negative entities, and how do you get these things out, or you're clearing your luminous field. And so what I realize is that, I'll tell you from a quantum thing point of view, is that the third distinction in quantum think 21 distinctions for anyone who's listening that is infinite possibility but what does it mean we live in a universe of infinite possibility and in the new science the possible world exists it's not nothing so there's the possible world this is comes from also uh, they all say it, but from the work of Amit Goswami, if you know him, the possible world and the and the actual world. So you could say the actual world is the manifest world, because when we talk about thought forms, you're in the <clears throat> in the possible world, right? Mm -hmm. But the possible world has reality. It just doesn't have actuality in the sense of physical manifestation, right? Makes sense so far. So yes. when I think about, oh, well, are there really entities and are they visiting me and are they in my apartment and should I get, you know, the clearing? I do do all of it anyway, just to make sure, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> but let's just say that what you're saying, I like the idea that you just, you know, imagine it as a thought. And in this world of infinite possibility, it means that every everything is possible. Any 
thought is possible. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean it has to become actualized. And this is where, in my you know, view, that, and I say the only thing to master is your very own mind, is that to become masterful beings on this earth, in this cosmos, is what we're here for. And that means that if we have these, if we know that we latched into that, you know, I call it coordinates, but you latched into whether you call it a planet or a, whatever, an entity, yeah. that we don't need to stay there. We, we can notice it. Oh, I, and it is very ordinary what you're talking about, the kind of things you're talking about, Karen, anger. Um, insecurity, uh, what are all the anger things? Jealousy, uh, I have that one. <laughs> and, you know, that one comes up for me. But things that are what we would consider the negative emotions, they're not absolutes. From a quantum think perspective, from a quantum worldview, there's no absolute fixed reality however we're brought up in the classical world where things look solid and fixed where objects look solid and we perceive them with our ordinary five senses and you know that would that's what makes the hologram real <laughs> so we have we do see it that way but we have to remember if we're living in the expanded reality in the world view and consciousness that it's not fixed so that's the good news because we're not stuck with any of it. Just because you even had, let's say you even had a habit of angry reaction. Uh, all of a sudden, you can wake up and realize, wait a minute, that's not a fixed attribute of who I am. That's not who I am. That's just something, as you were saying, Karen, that I plugged into. Yeah, And I can unplug myself from it. Mm -hmm. But it, it doesn't mean that anger doesn't exist in the possible world. Everything exists in an infinite possibility universe. So, you know, I had someone, a, a woman in one of our programs once, and she, and I remember she said this, it was so clear, it was just so simple. She said, well, I got rid of my anger, you know, talking about the results. I got rid of my anger. And I really did it because she got it. It was like transformation as distinct from change. Instead of trying to change the anger, which you have to keep it in place in order to change it, transformation is go beyond the current form. Go beyond that thought form and, and choose another intent. Choose another thought form. So that's what I feel we're here to master. And the reason that I created it as a system is because a system is like a vortex that carries you with it. So instead of thinking step by step by step, thought by thought, help, that presents like too much work, is that once you make that quantum leap in consciousness, literal, that you're in this new worldview. It's no longer a question of, is there, you know, reincarnation or is there such a thing as energy healing or can I tune into my own angels or God? It's like these things are no longer, it's not something, it may be some, it's always good to question, but it's not something to be afraid of or to doubt. It's something to explore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's how i that's how i see it right totally, totally and it's totally. like what you keep using that word delicious i love that word <laughs> because it really is it's like wow and you know every day i wake up and i realize we could be you could look in the 3d right the collective media consciousness and you could get very depressed, right? Or at least distressed. And why? Why should we? And so 
I don't because I just see it as all part of the breaking down of the of what has been created under the more limited way of thinking, under the old systems, under the linear logic, physical only is real. That's being broken up. All these differences that have caused the divisiveness, we're seeing the, it's like um, in astrology, they say, you know, in the cycles, they say when you're at the end of a cycle, so right now we're, we're in a seven year cycle of Uranus and Aries, but we're in the sixth year of it. So it's Uranus, which is, you know, the part of us that we have to go to the new, it's the future, the, you know, the eccentricity, the, the, the uh, igniting of genius and the Aries is the self. It's like, who am I and who am I going to be? So it's saying, you have to go to the new expression of yourself. And, you know, if you know astrology, which I know you do, where then you look in the house and you see which area of life it fits in your individual chart. But it's overall, that's what's going on. So you think, well, you're in the sixth year of a seven-year cycle. Well, what happens is that it strengthens because now, you know, you're into it. And the energy has been there, right? Talk about thought form. So you're heavily into that thought form collectively. It's affecting us, even if you're not tuned into astrology, you don't have knowledge, it doesn't matter, you're still affected. And now it's getting more intense. So when we look at what's going on in the world, to me, the intensity is coming to the end of reality as we have known it in the parts that don't work anymore, in the lack of integrity, in the greed, in the whatever you want to say, has thrown things out of balance. Because going back to Gaia, right, has to be in balance and, and in harmony with nature. So whatever we have now that's not that, we're seeing it like the fighting to hold on to that. And so again, it's us, we're here to say, no worries, right? Okay, we're here to hold the light, to see that more, what you said, like going out further and further and further out to see the more expansive picture. And the further out you go, that's why we love listening to the channels and you, you're always getting the channeling. And I think we all get our own unique wisdom channels coming through us so we can reflect it to each other. But when you go out and out and out and you get way outside of this 3D that's going on the daily basis, even though simultaneously we're living in it, but you're not attached and you're just seeing it as part of this is what unfortunately needed to happen for this new humanity, this new consciousness made manifest that we will make manifest, we are making manifest to emerge. So that was a long soapbox thing. But what I wanted was started out by saying every day I realized you could go in either direction. But when you went master your mind, you don't have to give in to the fear, the anger, the frustration, the, you know, pissed off at whoever you're pissed off with. So you can go into the hey, I have another opportunity to enjoy everything that's going on. 